Today, we are embarking on a journey unlike any other, creating a 6mm Warhammer 40k board. That's right, this is not your usual 32mm 40k board. This is about five times smaller. This is a first for me, not just in scale, but I've never done such a complete Warhammer board before. Initially, I thought of this enormous task as overwhelming, but this is not just a story about a project. It's a story about motivation. The importance of taking that first step and the surprising power of just getting started. Here in front of me, I have the blank canvas of this project. Four foam pieces, my trusted marker, my guide, and a whole lot of imagination. And there we go. The ripping, the attaching, the creation of a micro battlefield. This isn't just a gaming table. It's a world. Carving out the river with a kitchen torch somehow didn't make it into this video. But don't worry, if you want to see that action, I've got you covered. Check out the link in the description for a video where I tackle the similar process. You don't want to miss the fire, trust me. Here comes a crucial step, applying wall filler. This not only gives our hill a gentle, natural slope, but it also masterfully masks some of the cork cliff faces to give a more natural look. Plus, it does an excellent job of concealing the seams on the outer edges of our board sections. Now it's time to get smooth. We're sanding the wall filler on the outside of each board section and the river, achieving that smooth, natural feel. You know, there's just something oddly satisfying about making things smooth, isn't there? Sketching and planning the layout of the gaming table was a good exercise in understanding breaking down the larger project into smaller, more manageable bits. After looking at the blueprint and seeing what exactly the customer wanted, it was really hard for me to envision the finished piece. However, breaking it into smaller tasks made it seem a lot more achievable. With the plan in hand, it was time to start the actual build. It's been said before that a journey of a thousand miles starts with one step and this project was no different. As I took those first steps into creating this miniature world, I noticed that each step got easier and easier. Just starting had set the wheels in motion. All right, artisans, it's time for the big reveal. Our gaming table so far, unpainted, raw, and full of potential, like a blank canvas waiting to be transformed. Next up, we're bringing in the armor, black house paint. It might seem strange using house paint on a miniature gaming table, but trust me on this one, it gives the terrain a sturdy coating ready to withstand epic battles. Now comes the transformation phase, overbrushing the board with various shades of gray. This is where our terrain starts to truly come alive, with each brush stroke adding a layer of depth and realism. It's time to add some life to our terrain. Out comes the airbrush, and we're applying patches of olive greens and browns. The contrast against the gray really makes the terrain pop. This is one of my favorite steps. The board starts to feel less like a project and more like a piece of art. We're now going to add another layer of texture and color with some fine turf. It's going to be perfect for the 6mm scale that we're working on today. After a lot of trial and consideration, I think I found the perfect blend using earth, weeds, and yellow turf by Woodland Scenics. Watch as this vibrant greenery transforms the look and feel of our terrain. And now we're going to be transitioning from the board to the modular pieces. Today I've chosen to work with sheets of 3mm PVC plastic for the bases. Trust me, this stuff is durable and very easy to work with. Scoring it with a hobby knife, it's just like cutting through butter. Voila! Here we have our freshly cut out and edged bases. They may not look like much right now, but these are the foundations of our miniature landscape. Stay tuned, they'll soon be unrecognizable. Here's a segment that I thoroughly enjoyed. Our customer requested a dense thicket of trees to serve as a barrier in the swamp. So, with the help of our trusty E6000 glue, we're attaching parts of Woodland Scenic's tree armatures to the base. Presto, an instant maintenance-free forest. Just look at that. It's amazing how some branches attached to a base can start to resemble a forest, right? Pay attention to how the trees are thicker and taller towards the center, thinning out towards the outer parts of the base. It's all about creating that natural, organic feel. Time for some swamp engineering. To create small swamp pools, I need to ensure our resin won't escape. To do this, I'm adding a small layer of milliput around the outer rim of each of the pool bases. It's like building a miniature dam, only without the beavers. 
And now we're going back to our love of smooth things. Using the best tools at our disposal, our hands, we're making these bases look natural and smooth. Now, here's where we have a fun plot twist. Our client reached out asking if we could incorporate a classic 40k rune into one of the swamp pool sections, as if it were submerged. What a cool idea, right? So we're starting by crafting an L-shaped wall piece from some thin scrap foam. Adding details to the ruin is the name of the game now. Using some spare plastic strips and a heat tool, I'm breathing life into the foam ruin. It's these little touches that can really make a piece come to life and feel part of the Warhammer world. Right about this time, I tackled another challenge, creating some larger sized modular tree trunks. Unfortunately, I didn't film that part, but don't worry, I've got you covered here too. You can find a link in the description below to a video where I previously demonstrated this process. At this point in the build, it wasn't just about crafting, it was about meeting expectations. Knowing that someone else was relying on me to finish in the set time frame, added a spark of determination. It wasn't just about completing a task, it was also about not letting down a fellow game enthusiast. The added pressure in a strange way really helped out. Alrighty, back with our trusty black house paint. We're giving our modular pieces a thorough base coat. Remember, this stuff is like armor for our terrain, protecting it while also preparing it for the next layer of paint. It seems I got a little carried away during the painting process and well, I forgot to hit record again. But rest assured, it's all about layering and blending to bring these pieces to life. After all, we're creating a world here, one brush stroke at a time. Now let's wade into the exciting world of resin. We're pouring this swampy looking resin into the river and swamp pool section. This is always one of my favorite steps because it's where the terrain really starts to feel alive and natural. Pro tip. A kitchen lighter isn't just handy for your stove, it's perfect for popping bubbles in the resin too. And yes, it's as satisfying as it looks. Say goodbye to those little unwanted air pockets. As I put in all the finishing touches and stood back and looked at the final project, I was hit with an immense wave of fulfillment. Looking back, I realized that the journey's true worth lay in overcoming that initial hesitation and just getting started. So for all of you artisans out there that might be feeling overwhelmed with the project, bear this in mind, the first step may be the hardest, but it's undoubtedly the most important. Once you take that leap, you'll be astounded at what you're capable of achieving.